Put up your right hand and repeat after me. I have the life of God in me. I have the love of God in me. I have his nature. And I have his ability. Therefore, 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 I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. That is Christ Jesus. Speak to my heart. Change my life. Manifest yourself in me today, right here, right now, in Jesus' name. And the saint said, Amen. Amen. Woo-hoo. So, this thing just jumped out at me, and it's not part of my notes or nothing, but um, think about this. In John 16, 27, don't yell yet, but in John 16, 27, it says, God the Father loves you because you love Jesus. So, and my side note, it says, think about this. The God I serve is in me. The God I love is in me. The God that saved me is in me. The God that I pray to is in me. The God that I have faith in is in me. So let's go, and, and I want you to turn to somebody on your left and say, the God that I serve is in you. The God that I love is in you. The God that saved me is in you. The God that I pray to is in you. The God that I have faith in is in you. So what's your problem? <laughs> Woo-hoo. Come on now. We can't shake them up. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> So, you know, you can find anything on the, on the internet. And so I, uh, I was told not to rub my face. I got to pat it because it'll come off on my Kleenex. I hate when that happens. <laughs> I lose more faces that way. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I, I was, because uh, uh, we're, we're going through, because tonight we're having Encounter God night. So I looked it up. What is it to encounter God? And you know, I found it. I found a word. Having an encounter with God is more than a distant admiration or an emotional minute uh, or, or an emotional five minutes sometime in your life. An encounter with the living God, a true encounter with our Savior, an encounter with Jesus should not just excite us, it should change us. Isn't that good? It should change you. If you're going to have an encounter with God, you should be coming expecting to change. You don't want to walk in here the same way that you came in. Come on now. We're, you know, because they, they talk about you're going to get everything you expect. So what are you expecting when you come tonight? Hallelujah. Anyways, I thought that was pretty cool. You can find anything good or bad in the, on the internet, but this was good. So um, as I was preparing this message, I, I got two words. And, and it was forget not. Forget not. And we're going to take it out of uh, Psalms 103, verse 1. Oh, come on now. Psalms 103, verse 1. Thank you. And good morning to all the people watching live stream down in Panama and all over the world. (laughs) Anyways, Psalms 103, verse 1. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all his benefits. I'm going to drive that into you by the time that you're done. And somebody comes up to you with a a situation, you're going to forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your benefits? Iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness, and that's not a club. Come on now. God's not out, ooh. God is not out to show you some of his greatest hits. He wants to crown, he wants to crown you with loving kindness. Not clubbing kindness. Just saying. And tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Come on, now the lady should be saying, woo-hoo! I'll tell you what, 
even Ken came up to me and said, hey, you look younger. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm a Mary Kay man, but I'm okay. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, that'll change shortly. All right, so. And verse 6, the Lord ex executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Now, we're going to take this verse by verse. And uh, bless the Lord, verse 1, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Your soul is based on your mind, your will, and your emotions. So what you're doing is you're telling yourself what to do. So it's not a suggestion. It's like, hey, shake yourself up. Get up. And in the New Living Translation, it says, let all that I am praise the Lord. Let all that I am. Imagine all. If you ever let yourself go and let all that you are just give a praise to God. Every fiber of your being. I remember reading um, John G. Lake. He said, in your body, there's over 3 billion cells. And each cell is filled with the glory of God. So if all of your being, you have 3 billion cells just going, ah! What would happen to you? What would happen to this place? Come on now. Then the roof would come off. I guess it would. It says, let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. In the New Century Version, it says, with my whole being, praise the Lord. All my being, praise his name. So all that you, sometimes you've got to look in the mirror and say, hey, time to praise the Lord. Oh, I'm, am I the only one that had to do that? You ever wake up in those and you have the mopey dick moments? Oh, man. Nothing's working. Everybody makes me mad. I kicked that cat three times and it came back. Oh, I tell you, I like cats. They make good slippers. But anyways, but you ever have those times, right, where, where it's just like nothing is working. I'm, I'm sorry, Beth. I, I saw that hand. <laughs> but nothing is working right and everything is just, ah. Well, that's the time you got to just turn it around. Turn that frown upside down. And uh, there's a song. But it says stir us. <laughs> so we got to get into stirring ourselves up, getting ready. Here's the thing. You want to stir yourself up and get ready. Get ready for an audience with the Lord. You get, so you want to get yourself just kind of like, do you know what I'm going to do? Do you know what we're about to do? Do you know what we're fixing to do right now? Do you have any idea? We are about to have an audience with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Woo! Are you ready? <laughs> we just did that today. Come on, did we not have a moment or three or four or five? That was sweet, if I must say so myself. And I'm just, not because I'm on the team, but it, just, it was just, it was real nice. <laughs> so we're getting ready for an audience with our Lord. And in 2 Samuel uh, 6, 14, David danced before the Lord with all his might. Yep. David did it, all his might, and he was a king. He didn't care. So if a king didn't care... And if anybody was going to have a care or three or four, it would be a king, because they have to be dignified, don't they? And they have to be all of that. So if David could do it, what's wrong with us? So that's why he's saying, bless the Lord, <laughs> with all my being. He did it. So he gave, us a, he gave us an illustrated sermon. He said, okay, bless the Lord, now watch me. And he just shucked the corn. I mean, come on now, he is huffing it. Well, he danced so much, it made his wife jealous, made her mad. Amen. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> With your undignified self. <laughs> you know people like that. <laughs> I'll just praise the Lord on my own. Wait, 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 wait for it. I'm done. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Psalms 103, just jump down to verse 22. It says, bless the Lord all his works in all places. So what he's doing, he's building a case of his blessing because bless the Lord is an action. And what he's doing, he said, I'm going to bless you, all of your works, all places of your dominion. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Well, the Bible says he has dominion from what? Sea to sea. 
So everywhere you look, there should be a blessing in it. God somehow, somewhere, some way touched something to make it better than what it was. Come on. God touched us and made us better than what we were. Come on, we're a whole lot better than when, we, when he found us. I was a mess. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Ooh, I was a mess. <laughs> oh, I was. You, you wouldn't know. Anyways, praise the Lord. Hey, watch yourself, woman. <laughs> I will get you later. Anyways, um, Psalms 103.22 in the New Living Translation. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I should have changed my kids' names to goodness and mercy. I already got Shirley. It's good. All right, you'll get it later. <laughs> okay. Uh, Psalms 103.22, New Living tra- says, tra- Praise the Lord, everything he has created, everything in all his kingdom, let all that I am praise the Lord. Again, it says, let all that I am, let all that you are. That means hold nothing back. Because maybe that's, that could be probably some of the keys to our breakthrough. If we have a stronghold in an area, we're holding it back. But if we let all that we are into that stronghold, what's going to happen to it? It's got to go. All right? Breakthrough. Break every chain. Every chain, not some chains. Turn to Psalms 104, please. Should be just the next page over. Verse 1. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God. I like that. Make him personal. Make him your God. Not somebody else's God. You know, not your parents, for, you know, especially young people. Your parents, God. Well, you're, you know, no, 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 no. You've got to make him personal. Have a, have a relationship with him. It says, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You're clothed with honor and majesty. See, it, it, what he's doing is giving you lessons on how to bless. Sometimes, you know, because, um, you know, a lot of times we just, you know, praise the Lord, 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 praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, 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 praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You know, he wants more than that. So he's giving you stuff to work with. All his kingdom. All the things that he's done. Take a breath. Oh, praise you, Lord. I can breathe today on my own. I'm not hooked up to a machine. Come on. There are so many things. Go and turn around and slap somebody. Oh, thank you, Lord. I can move that hand. (laughs) He's that kind of God. <laughs> Anyways, praise the Lord. Um, turn to Psalms 146, verse 1. Psalms 146, verse 1. It says, praise the Lord. I'm going to read out of the New Living. Let all that I am praise the Lord. Now here pages. Psalms 146, verse 1. Are you there? I was told I go fast. I'm thinking, well, we were trained fast. <laughs> I remember when we first started with, here with Pastor Gary. Come on. I was just writing stuff down, writing it, writing, writing, writing. And I said, I'll find the, I'll find the verses later. But, there, you know, it's just like, it ain't going to happen. So, praise the Lord. Let all that I am praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. As long as I live. I will sing praises to my God with my dying breath. Isn't that something? Come on, as long as I live with my dying breath, all that I am, I am going to praise the Lord with all that is in me. Turn to Psalms 57. Psalms 57, verse 7. And I mean, it worked for David. I mean, he tapped into some stuff. Why? He prays with all that he is, with all that he am. So there's a key. Psalms 57, verse 7. It says, my heart is, I'm going to read this out of the Amplified. 
amplified because it's louder. We're musicians. Woo! All right. Well, I'm a musician. What? Okay. Verse 7. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is steadfast and confident. Isn't that good? Have you ever had a steadfast, confident heart in God? Which means he will do it again. If he came through once, he will do it again. My heart is steadfast and confident. I will sing and make melody. <laughs> That's two. Sing and make melody. So it should sound good, right? <laughs> <clears throat> awake, my glory, my inner self. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awake right early. Right some early. I don't know why it says it like that, right early. Maybe they're Newfoundlanders. <laughs> really? I will awake right early. What kind of English is that? I will awaken the dawn. <laughs> Get up! <laughs> Just kidding. Anyways. Um, I will praise and give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations, for your mercy and loving kindness are great, reaching to the heavens, your truth and faithfulness to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be all over the earth. That's blessing God. And as you do that, because you're giving out, it's just like the, uh, the water hose, and it gives water, but the hose gets wet too. So as you're, if you're blessing the Lord like that, what's going on to you? You're getting, come on now, you're getting steadfast and confident in who he is. He is God. He is in me, and he is for me, and he wants to do some real cool things with me. Wow. Psalms 103, verse 2. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not all his benefits. We're going to keep going back to Psalms 103 because until we get to verse 6. But in the New Living Translation, it says, Let all that I am, I love that, let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget about the good things he does for me. Never forget about the good things that he does for you. See, sometimes we get so tied up in all the negative, we tend to forget about all the good things that has happened. You know, they talked about Muhammad Ali, he'd be in a, in a, in a forum fighting, and you know, you're, you're going to have like 10,000 people shouting his name, but he'd always heard the one or two that booed him. And somebody can come up to you and, uh, you know, you have 25 people come up and tell you, wow, you look really nice today. And one person just come up and said, wow, that's a funky looking outfit you're wearing. Which one are you going to, which one are you going to listen to? Door number two. Because then you start looking, maybe it is. Maybe I just don't measure up. Maybe I don't have enough hair. Maybe I should have a weave. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can't flick my hair. <laughs> and the message it says, oh, my soul, bless God. Don't forget a single blessing. Not one. Don't forget one. If you're, if you're think about this. How long would it take in the, in the midst of a day for you to remember every single blessing God did for you for that day? Come on. Just make it practical. Start thinking. Well, I woke up. I'm on this side of the lawn, thank God. I get to go to church. No snowstorm, church was open. We got heat. We got lights. Come on. And we can just keep going and keep going. We got very cool people here. Come on now. Right? Not a dud among us. Isn't that good? <laughs> but I mean, come on now, don't forget a single thing. So I looked up and forget in dictionary.com, and it says to neglect. Usually as a result of an intentional error, cares, situations, stuff. Cares, situations, stuff will cause you to forget about the blessings that God has for you. An unexpected bill could float your boat or sink your boat. 
when he might have just the week before blessed you with a huge check. Somebody came up to me the other day in the, uh, of course, uh, the meeting place, superstore. <laughs> it's the only place where Christians get together and they congregate. You can have another little church there. But um, she came up and told me she, she received a $7,000 check in the mail. First one she ever had. You know the first thing out of my mouth? Get ready for more. But, and then she said, yeah, you know that check's in the mail? It works. Why do I say that? Because it works. Right? Amen. So, see anything she had to do it today? And I learned a new one. Okay. My money is not funny. My change is not strange. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too anointed to be disappointed. I'm too anointed to be disappointed. Bills came in. I'm too anointed to be disappointed. Oh, I feel sick. I'm too anointed to be disappointed. Kids gone crazy. I'm too anointed to be disappointed. I'm going to slap my spouse, but I'm too anointed to be disappointed. Come on now. You're too anointed to be disappointed in everything. In everything. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. So to forget to cease or fail to remember to be unable to recall. If you're unable to recall the good things that God has done, what happens? You're getting flooded with stuff. And, you know, the Bible talks about taking your care and casting it, rolling it off, right? And that's what we're going to do more. And listen to this one. To forget someone's name. Jehovah. Jireh. My provider. Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Come on, don't be forgetting who God is. Forget not. Come on now. Think of this. It says another one. To fail to think of or to take no note of, remember the last time he brought you through? Did you forget about that? What happened? Because there's a new set of circumstances? Yeah, but don't forget about the old ones. He brought me through. And he will do it again, and he will do it again, and he will do it again. Why? Because there's an expectation, because there's a, there's a steadfast confidence in us saying, hey! Hey! hey. What will we say to these small things? I'm too anointed to be disappointed. That's my new one. I like that. Just too anointed to be disappointed. I refuse. <laughs> Okay, uh, 1 Samuel 17, verse 34, please. 1 Samuel 17, 34. And it said, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear. I took a lion, or took a lamb out of the flock, and I went on after him and smote him. I delivered it out of his mouth. When he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing as he has defied the armies of the living God. Now we read that. Now think about it. It says that he grabbed, a, uh, <laughs> he grabbed a lion by his beard. Alex, you want to flip up that first, the first slide? Look at this. Okay, he stuck his hand underneath those bottom teeth. All right? Now listen to this. Lions in Israel, adult males can grow up to nine feet. That's 2.7 meters in length, weighing about 400 pounds, and their teeth are approximately four inches. 
David, what did he do? He forgot not. And stuck his hand in that mouth and took a lion, took a lamb out of his teeth. Come on now. Any takers? Come on. Are you steadfast and confident? Because if, you, if you're not, <laughs> we'll see you in heaven. <laughs> Come on now. Okay, the next one. There's a bear. These are Eurasian brown bears. They grow approximately nine feet. The brown bear has an enormous muscle between the, uh, the, the shoulder blades that makes a brown bear stand out above any bear species. The, normal, the enormous shoulder muscle that the brown bear has means the brown bear has immensely strong forearms and allows a bear to break animal bones with one single swipe. The brown bear has massive paws and claws that can grow uh, longer than six inches. These are claws. A full-grown male weighs on an average from 580 to 780 pounds. The largest Eurasian brown bear recorded was uh, 1,058 pounds and was, was uh, nearly eight and a half feet long. Females typically range between uh, 330 and 550 pounds. He said, I beat a lion. I beat that. Then he looked at an uncircumcised Philistine. He said, no problem. No problem. Come on. That's a God we serve. Why? You're too anointed to be disappointed. <laughs> Come on now. Need some dental work, but I'll tell you what. All right, thanks, Alex. Turn to Luke chapter 4. No, chapter 8, verse 4. Luke chapter 8, verse 4. Sometimes you need to visualize these things in order to, you know... And if Goliath was like nine feet tall, that's a big boy. But what did David say? <laughs> he's, he's too big not to miss. <laughs> he said, I'll take this stone and hit him in his old bucket head. Knock that boy out. Luke chapter 8, verse 4. I'm going to read it to you out of the New Living Translation. Uh, 4 to 15. It says, One day Jesus told a story to a large crowd that gathered from many towns to hear him. Uh, verse 5. A farmer went out to plant his seed. As he scattered it across the field, some seed fell on a footpath where it was stepped on. The birds ate it. Other seed fell among rocks and began to grow. But the plant soon wilted and died for lack of moisture. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up uh, with it and choked out the tender plants. Still, the other seed fell on fertile soil. This seed grew and produced a crop that was a hundred times as much as been planted. And when he had said this, he called out, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. His disciples asked and, and said what this parable meant. And, and he replied, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God, but I use parables to teach the others so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. When they look, they won't really see. When they hear, they, they won't understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is God's word. The seeds that fell on the foot, uh, footpath represent those who hear the message only to have the devil come and take it away from their hearts. How many people have you noticed you share the good news and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Then all of a sudden, first time something happens, this ain't no, this ain't no good. I see it on Facebook all the time. One day there's, people are sitting up there giving praises to God. Next time they're cussing God out. It's like, man, let your yay be yay and let your nay be nay. And really, leave that stuff off, because all you're doing is letting everybody know you're flake. Really. I mean, you know, if you're going to use Facebook, use it to deliver gospel, good news. But don't be, you know, yeah, who does that? Anyways. Huh. Only to have the devil come and take it away from their hearts and prevent them from, being, from believing and being saved. That's what the devil does. Immediately he comes. The seeds on the rocky soil represent those who hear the message, receive it with joy. But since they, have, uh, they don't have deep roots, they believe for a while, and then they fall away when they face temptation. Do you know people like that? We've seen them come and we've seen them go. 
And, you know, that's why we have these things like Christianity 101 and, you know, uh, and getting back to the basics and, and all these Bible school courses. Why? So you can have deep roots, right? Deep roots can't be moved. Come on now. But the seeds that fell among the thorns represent those who hear the message, but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life. And so they never grow into maturity. And the seeds that fell on good, good soil represent honest, this is here, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. See, that's me. I'm hundredfold. Yeah. But it really breaks it down to, you know, because you, you see some people, and, and you, you can basically, you can tell where they are just by, okay, they're over here today. They're 60, they're, they're 50, they're 30, they're home. <laughs> Glory to God, what happened, right? And so, you know, we try to get people into the church as much as the doors are open. Why? To help renew your mind. Right? And we're not trying to remove your mind. It would be easier. <laughs> but to, to renew it. So that way you can, you know, you can grow some deep roots. And when, when stuff happens, because Jesus said, you know, it rains on the just and the unjust, which means stuff happens to both of us. And so when it does, you need to know what to do. So it doesn't take you by surprise or it doesn't plain take you at all. You just look at that and say, really? 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 Deuteronomy chapter 8, please. No. No, 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 no. It's a good one, but we're not going to go there. Um, Psalms 103, verse 3, it says, Who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Forgives all your iniquities, heals all your diseases. New Living Translation says, He forgives all my sins and He heals all my diseases. All of your sins, all of your diseases. Message that says he forgives your sins, every one. He heals our diseases, every one. I like that. Because if it's every one, then that's every one. And sin has just missed the mark. I missed it. Forgive me, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Now walk in your newness of direction. All right? Isaiah 43, 25, don't turn there, but it says that I, even I, am he that blots out your transgressions, sins, for my own sake, and will not remember your sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare you that you may be justified, just as if you didn't sin. How are you going to do that? I'm glad you asked. Turn to 1 John 1, verse 7. 1 John 1, verse 7. Come, let us plead together. What's he saying? He's not begging you. Oh, won't you help me? Won't you help me? Jesus, Jesus, help me, help me, help me. 1 John 1, verse 7. It says, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. <laughs> Hello. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you are cleansed from all unrighteousness, what does that make you? Thank you. That's what you do. Come on now. That's... He said, put me in remembrance, pleading together. Lord, I messed up. Here I am, but I thank you. You said if I confess it before you, you, you just, come on now. You forgive me, and I thank you. So I forget not. If we confess our sins, he's faithful, and he is just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Ephesians 1, 7, it says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Oh, come on now, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. 
how rich. Come on, and rich enough to buy us back, put us on the right track, dust us off, and give us a little push ahead. Come on now. Because sometimes we need a little kickstart. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what it's like? You get stung once, then all of a sudden you're kind of like, ooh, 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 ooh. And then God just comes up behind you, boom, <laughs> go. <laughs> Not a smack. I said a push. <laughs> Turn to Matthew chapter 9, verse 2. Matthew chapter 9, verse 2. And if you have it in the message, pop it up there. Because I, I, I really like the way it reads. It says, They were hardly out of the boat when some men carried a paraplegic on a stretcher, set him down in front of them. Jesus, impressed by their bold belief, in, other, in, in King James, it says, when he saw their faith, said to the paraplegic, cheer up, son, I forgive your sins. Some religious scholars whispered, why, that's blasphemy. Can you, you can almost see him. <laughs> Who do you think you are? But Jesus knew what they were thinking. And he said, why this gossipy whispering? <clears throat> Which do you think is simpler? To say, I forgive your sins, or to get up and walk? Well... Just so it's clear that I am the Son of Man and authorized to do either or both. Come on. I am authorized to do either or both. How do you like me now? At this, he turned to the paraplegic and said, get up, take up your bed, go home. The man did it. Woo, the man did it. How many times has God told us to do something and we sort of did it. <laughs> oh, we're still getting around to it. I used to have a round to it on my desk. <laughs> it was a round, and it says, this is a round to it. And I used it. I'll get around to it. So the crowd was awestruck, amazed and pleased that God authorized Jesus to work among them this way. And I got this from the Holy Ghost, I believe it. You are just as healed as you are forgiven, and you are just as forgiven as you are healed. You are just as healed as you are forgiven, and you are just as forgiven as you are healed. There is no difference. If you've been forgiven, you're just as healed as you are forgiven. So when you're in a battle and you're dealing with stuff, realize, stir yourself up, forget not. Hey, I am forgiven. There's chapter and verse for that. If you can find chapter and verse for anything, it's yours. If I am forgiven, I am healed. And vice versa. If I'm healed, I'm forgiven. It works. Psalms 103, verse 4, talks about who redeems my life from destruction, crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies. Um, New Century Version says, he saves my life from the grave, loads me with love and mercy. He loads you. He wants to daily load you with love and mercy. Message, it says, he redeems you from hell. Period. Hello. Holla. He redeems you from hell. He saves your life. He crowns you with love and mercy. A paradise crown. A paradise crown. Psalms 107, verse 19. If you can pop that up. Do you have the Message Bible up there? Or am I just saying that? You don't have it? Really? Wow. All right. Take my word for it or buy one. <laughs> it's all good. Um, Psalms 107, verse 19 to 22. It says, Then you called out to God in your desperate condition. I did. And he got you out in the nick of time. He spoke the word that healed you. He spoke the word that healed you. Come on now. That pulled you back from the brink of death. Could you imagine? It's like, whoa! And you get pulled back. 
That's what he did. We were going over the edge. Come on. We were so close to the edge. That's why, you know, it, it, it just because I've been there, and you try to tell people that haven't been there to try to save them the trip, but it's like, I had somebody come up, well, you had your fun. Well, it wasn't really fun. But I'm trying to save you a whole lot of heartache and, and stuff. But a lot of times you want to see how close we can get to the edge. Ah, just a little bit. Ooh. I can get a little bit closer this time. Maybe if I hold on to a little bit of word. Huh? Huh? How close do you want to get to the edge? You know the devil don't play fair. <laughs> He's underneath that edge chipping away at the, at the top. So you think that it's all safe and secure here? One day, boom! The good news is, the good news is, that God is there to pull you back. Always. Always. He will never leave you where he found you. Thank God. Thank God he don't get tired. <laughs> I would have forgot. I would have gave up on me a long time ago. Come on, I remember when I was a kid and my grandfather was preaching at this church. Every week I go up and get saved. I just don't want to miss God. Because, you know, they talk about, you know, he's coming as a thief in the night. This could be your night. <laughs> like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I didn't want to miss God. So every time, he gave a, <laughs> every time they gave an altar call, I'm first one up. I said, hey, I am not missing you. I refuse. And I took, <laughs> I took the Lord in some places. I know he didn't want to go. Don't laugh too hard. You know you did too. <laughs> yeah, I try to be all sanctified. Yeah, well, I didn't take the Lord anywhere like that. <laughs> Anyways. He says that he pulled you back from the brink of death. So thank God for his marvelous love, for his miracle mercy to the children he loves. He loves you so much. Come on, he can't help himself. Offer thanksgiving sacrifices. Tell the world what he's done and sing out. Tell the world. Come on, isn't that good? Psalms 103, verse 5, talks about uh, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. We're climbing in there. Eagle renewal. New Living Translation says, He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed. He fills my life with good things. He wants to fill your life with good things. Just let him. Stop fighting him. Let him do it. He knows what he's doing. It's like a pastor, Scott gives you an adjustment. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, but <laughs> you leave it in the hand of a specialist. He knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. New century, he says, he, feel, he satisfies me with good things. He wants you satisfied. Are you satisfied right now with everything? Right where you are right now, are you satisfied? No? Well, he wants to satisfy you. So if you're not satisfied, he wants to satisfy you. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? He wants to. You want to. <laughs> Why don't we just get along? <laughs> really? That's all we got to do. He satisfies me with good things. It makes me look young again like an eagle. Woo Isaiah 40, 31. You know this one. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Renew, refurbish, revamp, redo. You need a redo. You need a redo on your updo. What up, though? <laughs> they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. 
He wants you satisfied. Today. Psalms 103, verse 6, it says, The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Listen to this in a New Living Translation. It says, The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. Come on, have you been treated unfairly? Have you just had just, just the rug pulled out from underneath you? It says the Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. If the world's been crapping all over you, realize this. God will have his say. Come on now. New Century Version says, the Lord does what's right and fair for all who are wronged by others. Come on, can you make it any simpler than that? Yeah, message. God makes everything come out right. He puts victims back on their feet. He wants to stand you up and, and show you off and just say, hey, look, he took your best shot and here he is. Here she is. This is my prized possession. You no touchy anymore. Come on now. He did that to Saul. He did it to Saul. Saul's up there killing Christians and all that other stuff. After a while, he said, hey, I'm about to knock you out. <laughs> Psalm 72, verse 12. Twelve to fourteen, New Living Translation. It says, He will rescue the poor when they cry to him. He will help the oppressed who have no one to defend them. He feels pity for the weak and the needy. He will rescue them. He will redeem them from oppression and violence, for their lives are precious to him. You may think that nobody cares, that nobody's looking after your stuff, that you're in this all by yourself. But I got news for you today. It's good news. You are never alone. He will never make you walk alone. You are not in some valley by yourself, some valley of dry bones. He is here. And he is out for your good. Very much to your good. Matthew Henry, he's got this commentary, and he said this about Psalms 103. In order to return, uh, in order to return our Excuse me. In order to our return of praises to God, that's why it sounds so weird. In order to our return of praises to God, there must be a grateful remembrance of the mercies we have received from him. Isn't that good? Forget not all his benefits. If we do not give thanks for them, we do forget them. If you're not giving thanks to God for his goodness, you will soon forget what he's done. Why? Because stuff has come to try to distract you and get you off of the path and, and because God has you set up going this way, then all of a sudden the storms of life are trying to get you over here. But God is trying to get you back here. Then the storms are over here. But we have encounter God night, so that's going to get us back over here again. But then the storm takes you over there. Oh, it's Wednesday. Woohoo! I remember when we first got, <laughs> when we first started coming back to the church because we were, we were split up and it was a mess. And uh, Sundays was really good because we'd be both holy <laughs> and the anointing would be there. But, but I'll tell you, by Monday, the anointing lifted and I'm looking at this woman, she's looking at me going, Don't you have a job? <laughs> Don't you have somewhere to go? And so after a while, this is, what, this is how we got on the Wednesday services. Because Shirley, <laughs> Shirley just, she started calling Pastor Nancy and just said, hey, listen, you need to have a Wednesday service. We can't stand each other on, by Wednesday. It's like, it's not good. We can't, we can't. <laughs> it, it weren't working. And so they started, okay, we'll have, we start having Wednesday services. Saved our bacon. Come on now, you, because there, there's so much of this world between Sunday and Wednesday that you need to come and get showered off. 
Well, come here, you can get a shower right now. Anyways, but, because <laughs> it, it's just not going to, it's not going to work. Here's a couple of verses just to think about. First John 4.4. 4. You belong to God, my dear children. You've already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit that lives in the world. God in you. First John 5, 1 John 5.1. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Is that you? Do you? Okay, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Has everybody done that? Put your hand up if you have. Okay, now, if you haven't, put your hand up. <laughs> <Nobody here. Ooh. laughs> that sounds like commitment. All right. So, based on that, you believe that Jesus is the Son of, uh, is the Christ and is born of God. Then, verse 4, it says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. So, there's a world overcomer on the inside of you. Why? Because you said so. Amen. Because you said so. And this is a victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Romans 8.35, No, in all these things we are more than a conqueror through him that loved us. If you're more than a conqueror, could you imagine? Okay, one thing to be a conqueror, but what's it like to be more than one? Come on. That would be like saying, okay, if you're a conqueror, that would make you a champion, but more than that would make you a world champion. Would it not? Or a conqueror could be a, a vice president, but a more than that would be a president. God wants to add some more to your van. He does. He's like that. First Corinthians 15, 57 and 58. Listen to this in the message. Now, in a single victorious stroke of life, all three, sin, guilt, death, are gone. The gift of our master, Jesus Christ, thank God. With all this going for us, my dear, dear friends, stand your ground, don't you hold back. Throw yourselves into the work of the master, confident that nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. Throw yourself into it. Boom! Here we are. Last verse. Can you handle one more? Ephesians 6.10. Finally. I like that. Finally. This is what the rocks got cook at. No, okay. Uh, this is finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Not your might, but his might. I remember when Pastor Gary Bightley was here, he was, he was talking about that, and he said, um, and in the power of his mightiness, mightiness, it's might personified, coming at you on every single wave. His might is coming in to, to, in to fix your stuff and then fix your brother's stuff, fix your sister's stuff. Go through the whole family just fixing stuff. Mightiness, it's, it's like a, something that just keeps on growing and growing and growing until it just doesn't take sides, it just takes over. woo Man! Pastors Gary and Nancy Hooper, along with their friendly congregation, warmly invite you to join with them at New Covenant Ministries Church in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, Canada. We minister to the whole family with ministry groups for all ages. You'll love the anointed praise and worship, the friendly atmosphere and dynamic teaching of Pastor Gary. Sunday services are held at 10.30 a.m. with midweek services on Wednesdays at 7 p.m at New Covenant Ministries Church, 110 Thorn Avenue in the Burnside Industrial Park in Dartmouth. For more information on our church, other ministries, and for products and Christian resources, visit us online at www.newcovenantchurch.ca or phone us toll free at 1-866-296-WORD. That's 1-866-296-9673. Learn to live victoriously. Come visit New Covenant Ministries Church in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, Canada and discover God's plan for your life.